guest stars Agnes Moorhead. There is no more respected member of the performing arts than Miss Agnes Moorhead. She's an actress of great depth and a warm and beautiful human being, to which her host of friends around the world attest. Her Scottish Presbyterian heritage has given Miss Moorhead a love for the Word of God. And you'll be interested to know that her uncle's name appears as one of the editors of the Schofield Bible Notes, the monumental work that has helped literally millions to become acquainted with the Scriptures. And now to remind us of the events which led up to the triumph of Easter, here is Miss Agnes Moorhead. watched him die. Joanna, Salome, Mary, and I. We had followed the master from Galilee to care for his daily needs as the end drew near. On the day that he was crucified, we could do no more than stand as spectators away from the crowd that pressed closely about the three crosses. An awesome darkness covered the city, the elements sharing in our grief. About three o'clock in the afternoon, a stillness settled over the crowd. Those who had come to mock and jeer had had their say and now stood uneasily with the rest, waiting. Suddenly the silence was broken by a loud voice from the figure on the center cross. Not the weak, faltering sound of one who has suffered to death, but a firm, controlled utterance. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The head marred more than any man's, dropped to the tortured breast, and it was finished. When the crowd had dispersed, a man from Arimathea, a counselor by the name of Joseph, claimed the body, having received permission from the Roman authorities. We followed the little procession down the hill to the garden cemetery and watched as they prepared the body for burial and placed it tenderly in a new tomb carved in rock in which no one had ever been laid. Then a great stone was rolled across the entrance. How can I tell you of the long day that followed? Forbidden to stir from the household yet pacing the floor many times, a Sabbath day's journey. I tried to stamp out the dreadful image of the hilltop crosses, and that one, rejected of men, bereft of God. When the Sabbath had finally passed, very early in the morning, I took spices and returned to the garden hoping the Roman guard would roll back the stone and allow me to anoint the body. And to my amazement, the stone had already been rolled back. Inside the tomb, the grave clothes lay, all in one place. But the body of Jesus was gone. Alarmed, I ran into the city to the house where the disciples had spent the Sabbath together. And awakening Peter and John, I told them someone had taken the body of our Lord. I couldn't keep pace with them as they ran through the early light of dawn to the cemetery. And by the time I had reached the tomb, my strength was gone. 
and my grief was uncontrollable. Looking about for Peter and John, I became aware of an unearthly glow coming from the sepulchre. And stooping down, I looked inside and to my astonishment saw two figures in white. One sitting at the head of the grave clothes and the other at the feet of the place where Jesus' body had laid. One of the angels, seeing my tears, asked, Why are you crying? Because they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they put him. I turned from the dazzling brightness of the angelic beings and sensed another's presence behind me. It was the gardener. Or so, I suppose. Oh, sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. The figure spoke a single word. Mary. And suddenly, my grief, my loneliness vanished and rapture filled my being. Master! I cried and flung myself at his feet. Touch me not, he said, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God, and your God. I marveled at how quickly I returned to the upper room to tell the others that I had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto me. It was not until much later that I learned something that I shall always remember and treasure. That morning that he arose from the dead, the Lord appeared first to the least worthy of all his followers. A woman reclaimed from the depths of sin, once possessed of devils. That woman was the first one to hear the resurrection news. And she, in turn, was privileged to tell the others such love, such compassion, such forgiveness. Do you wonder that I, that woman, Mary Magdalene in Galilee, do you wonder that I call him Master. <laughs>